श्री गणेशाय नम ओ श्री सरस्वत नम ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम ओ समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ मूकं कौति वाचा पंगु लंघयते गिरी यम वंदे परमानंदमाधव ओ सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ भद्रंकर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्ये मक्षजत्रा स्थिंग स्तुष्टुवागंसस्तनो व्यशेम देवितदा स्वस्ति नो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नक्षो अरिष्टेमी स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शातिशा the third mundaka of mundaka upanishad begins with this very beautiful visual of a tree on which two very similar looking birds that are close friends are perched one of them is moving from branch to branch trying to eat various fruits and enjoys or suffers whereas the other bird is just silently watching these two birds are the jiva and the ishvara this jiva goes through different births goes through different lokas that is the branches in the tree and experiences different fruits of its own action and when it is something desirable according to the bird something that is coveted it is very happy and sometimes if it is not something that one would like it becomes unhappy and all this while it is so lost deluded that it does it is not even aware of its friend who is just there and by sitting and witnessing alone is enabling and enlivening and at some point looks at that bird and when he starts looking at that bird recognizes that that is what is my real nature and this whole tree is actually the glory of the bird which means the jiva looks at the ishvara and the ishvara's essential nature that is that supreme consciousness that is me and this whole world is nothing but a manifestation of that supreme self when once when it recognizes that the jiva doesn't have its own individual identity remaining it as though merges into the supreme consciousness 
like a drop of water merging back into the ocean, like a reflection merging back to the person. And that's how it becomes free from all sorrow. Vita Shoka. <clears throat> this same idea, because here this section has begun for two reasons. One is to give us certain uh, techniques or other certain disciplines that may help on this path and also again reiterate and re-indicate that Supreme Self and the journey and the how part of it uh, so that the seekers get help. So the same journey of this jiva in another words that how that jiva experiences that supreme consciousness and goes beyond all sorrow, bondage etc. It is again in few different words is uh, presented here in mantra number 3. Yada pasya pasya de rukma varnam pasya pasya de rukma varnam kartaramisham purusham brahma yonim kartaramisham Tada vidwan punya pape vidhuya. Tada vidwan punya pape vidhuya. Niranjan of paramam samya mopaiti. Niranjan of paramam samya mopaiti. Yada. This in Sanskrit is. Few words go together. Yada, tada. When, then. So, yada, when. Pashyate. Pashyate, pashyati sees. Who sees? Pashyaha. Pashyaha actually is not very. Uh, the grammar that we are familiar with, it is not. Pashyaha, pashyate, both words. But it is uh, allowed in the scriptures because scriptures have their own grammar. And here it means the seer, Pashyaha, who was a seeker but later on has become the seer, Pashyaha, Pashyate, he sees. So the one who was the seeker, so this whole journey, how is it? Which Gurudev very beautifully puts it. At first he was ignorant, he is just roaming around here. Suddenly he feels that there is something missing. He starts seeking. Then, due to the scriptures, etc., he knows what is there. But still he has not found it. But now he knows what he is looking for. Then he starts searching. So there is just roaming, then seeking, then searching. Then finding. So that's how when he is seeing. So, Yada Pashya Pashyate, when the seer sees, what does he see? Rukma Varanam. Rukma Varanam means the one who is uh, bright, brilliant. Means here what it means is the self effulgent consciousness. That Rukma Varanam, that consciousness. So, who is this consciousness? What? So, there are some words to indicate. Kartaram, Kartaram, the one who has created this universe. Isham, the one who is a lord of this universe. Purusham, the one who is infinite, complete in oneself. Not only that, but is pervading and the indweller of everybody. Purusham. Brahma Yonim, he is the cause of the creator himself. That when 
someone sees that consciousness. Now, we, these words, Rukma Varanam, Kartaram, Isham, Purusham, Brahma Yonim, all these words are pointers for meditation. Each word is potent to help us invest our entire attention into the self. When this seer sees, Rukma Varanam means who is a brilliant, effulgent one. As soon as we say effulgent one, what does it mean? It means there is no need of any other light or instrument to illuminate. If I want to look for something in the room, I need to turn on the light. But if somebody says, is the lamp still lit or has it been put off? I don't need the light to know whether the lamp is lit or not. If it is lit, it can be seen. Means it has its own light. No other instrument is required. But to see a lamp also, eyes are required. But here eyes are also not required. To see the eyes, the mind is required. Here mind is also not required. So no instrument, no illumination is required to see that Rukma Varnam, that self-effulgent consciousness. And that is why the external light is actually opposed to darkness. Whereas, this consciousness is not even opposed to darkness. Because how do you know I am not able to see anything? Somebody is seeing that I am not able to see anything. That seeker, that is a self-effulgent one. There is nobody else. Nothing else. Okay. But who knows there is nothing else? That illuminator of nothing else is the consciousness. So the consciousness is not opposed to even darkness, even ignorance, even lack of any experience. No objects, no experience. We are in deep sleep, dreamless sleep. And then we wake up and say, I did not know anything. Okay, I did not know anything is spoken by the intellect. The senses, but who knew that there was no experience? Who knew all this had gone to sleep? There was nothing else. Who knew? That consciousness, who is not even opposed to darkness. This light can never illumine darkness. In the sense, as soon as this light comes, darkness is gone. So you can't illumine darkness with this light. This light will destroy darkness. There is consciousness, it can illumine light as well as darkness. It can illumine thought of knowledge, thought of ignorance. It can illumine experience and no experience. It is unopposed. Therefore, in every experience, he is always there. And because he is so common in everything, he is missed. We miss him. That which is common is not seen. We don't pay attention. This is the beauty of common and special. That which is common, that which is simple is easily missed. Special is noticed. But if we think about it, special means what? Finite, limited. Common means what? Pervasive, infinite. So common means it is everywhere. Special means it is only this much. So next time if somebody tells us, you are so special to me, understand that it is, it is not a praise. From Vedanta standpoint, it is bringing us down. 
but nobody will say you are common to me. <laughs> so the worldly things that are you know good or supposed to be praised, once we understand Vedanta, it is actually like you are very limited for me. So it is so interesting. Uh, that doesn't mean we will we should not tell people you are special. Huh? That doesn't mean you go and tell people you are so common to me. Uh, they, they will not understand the language. But Vedanta is so different to this worldly transaction. The special means, but it is noticed definitely. See, when there is some disease or pain or something, immediately it is noticed. But so many years, no disease, no pain. Do we notice it? It is common, not noticed. But little bit of pain, immediately, I have so much pain, I have so much pain, I have so much pain. So, this consciousness is so common, even in the darkness, even when there is no other experience, Consciousness is there. That is why only the one who sees is called a seer. Seer means like not just no, I am seeing, I have opened my eyes and I am seeing, I am a seer. No. Because that I am seeing, okay. But am I seeing the underlying consciousness for which even I don't need to open my eyes? So, eyes open, so, oh, so with open eyes you can't see. No, with open eyes also it can be seen. With closed eyes also it can be seen. But eyes are not required and it need not be seen with the eyes. Because eyes can only see color and form. But what is there underlying that color and form? That consciousness. One who recognizes that. Rupma Varna. Kartaram. Kartaram means, actually Kartaram means the doer. But here when we say Shankaracharya Ji, Guru Dev, the creator of the universe, Kartaram. Even if we take the, the, the meaning doer, literal meaning of the word, who does? Inert objects cannot do anything. Now, what is this packet of flesh and bones? Inert. So, who is the doer? Again, we are seeing that which can be seen. But are we recognizing what is actually happening there? For example, if there is a battery operated robo or a car, some toy battery operated. Now, we may see the movement of the toy and the, the car is moving forward, the car is coming behind. So, we, we may see all, see all those things. It is turning, it is going straight, it is going up and inclined, it is coming down. Okay, very good. But who is doing all that? Are we recognizing that battery which is there? That is only energizing it. And behind that battery, the one who is operating that conscious entity is there. His hands are there. Behind those hands, the mind is there. Behind that mind, that consciousness is there. That consciousness, I am to recognize that. In all activity, kartaram. Even if there is an effect, kartaram, the cause. <coughs> When we say kartaram, here indication is towards the efficient cause, nimitta karana. So one who is creating, one who has brought this creation about, kartaram. And any action that is being performed by any being actually can only and only be attributed to consciousness and nothing else. Cannot any action because action presupposes sentiency and sentiency can be lent by consciousness alone, nothing inert.
can lend any sentiency so that any action can happen. We say nowadays this is like fascination for artificial intelligence. AI tools are there, you just put this and everything will be done and everything will be quickly done. It's very good. Puju Guruji made this very beautiful statement. And that's what this also is indicating. Kartara means what? Is behind artificial intelligence is human intelligence. And behind human intelligence is divine intelligence. And that is this consciousness. Yes, it may be you know, fascinating to see what all it can do, but can it do by itself? A computer, nowadays a phone itself can do so many functions. Try without charging it. Everything is there, but no charge. What will happen? It is useless. It only is a paperweight after that. We can't do anything. Okay, there is electricity also. It's charged also everything. But there is no person to operate. What will happen? Something, initiation has to happen from where? From a conscious being. Something has to, they did some experiments and all made uh, two AI powered robots talk to each other, have a conversation among each other. They have had interviews with this robot, but they did among two, two of them. It was very famous and people, they made such statements and all. They say that no, they, are, they are doing this, they are doing that, all that, okay. But even that conversation was initiated by whom? Without human initiation, it can never happen. And human, how is that human functioning? Without consciousness, it is not possible. Tartara. So, if any action is happening, to be able to recognize that consciousness, that is Isham, Isham the Lord. This, the one who is the doer, is also the Lord. Lord means the, the one under whose control everything is there. Isham. Now, control again is does not mean that he is sitting and controlling everyone. Control means, as Pooja Guruji very beautifully puts it, he has the main switch. Disconnect, over. Main switch. So that is control. Control does not mean he will interfere in every little nitty gritty of everything. No. We are okay. Like that bird. He is just sitting, watching. Do whatever you want. You are doing your karma. You are suffering. You are enjoying. Okay. Let me know when you need me. Completely democratic. No interference, nothing. Isham. When someone has all control, that's when one can just watch. The one who does not have control only will keep, you know, worrying and wanting to do something. Kartar, Isha. Now, what is this maximum? If he does something completely wrong, I have the remote in my hand. Tuck over it. I don't need to worry. Sometimes it's driving schools and all. The instructor also has the clutch and the brake with him. Because he knows that this learner sometimes may not follow instructions. So, they have on the other side also there is clutch and brake with them. And then they say, okay, so, 
slowly move on to the road slowly step on that accelerator slowly release this clutch slowly go forward and one was not practiced much then how will you stop he is there isham everything under control he'll he'll operate it from base don't worry okay 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 slow slow no, slow he is not interfering as such but he is making sure that the person is safe and gets the confidence also isham so kartaram isham purusham now purusham word we have seen it before purishayanat means the one who is the indweller of all bodies of all beings and purusham means purnatvat the one who is full complete that's called purusham the one who is complete so what can be complete that infinite only can be complete purusham brahma yonim whatever we can see as the cause of anything the cause of that cause is brahma yonim so that is why there are many many theories how did this creation come about is it came from an atom it came from splitting of an atom it came with a bang so many different types of theories are there whatever we recognize as the cause the cause of that cause is and here when we say brahma yonim here the indication is towards material cause tartaram efficient cause so he is the efficient and material cause both and what does it mean when efficient and material cause are one and the same it means the creation is an appearance kartaram brahma yonim the cause of the cause we see any species when they are small babies any species they are adorable beautiful cute whatever adjectives we want to use he just as soon as we see we get attracted any species when they are small we were also once upon a time very cute it's only after we grew up the real form came out when nobody comes towards us for childhood people used to come to us even a donkey even a pig tiny tiny small little get attracted oh baby oh baby so so cute so chubby so ha huh. get attracted immediately okay who child is this so who child is this means what who is the cause Say, ah, this is mother, a ah, mother. This mother's child. Who is the cause of that mother? Also, tracing back, tracing back, tracing back. Where will it go? Brahma Yoni. The Brahma Ji is the creator of this whole universe. Ah, who is the creator of Brahma Ji? Ah, Brahma Yoni. All this was made by the five elements. Okay, where did the five elements come from? Brahma Yoni. the scientist said that we can take over now bhagwan retire now we have enough uh, now we will take care of the universe you can retire or maybe go on a holiday or something bhagwan said i agree it is good that you are so confident but i want to make sure that you can really handle before i take leave so yeah please tell me so bhagwan made one pot clay pot simple can you make this if you make this and i will be satisfied and i will uh, go that bhagwan bhagwan you are i thought you will create some super computer or something and then you ask me to do all that we have done all those things what pot said, no no make no okay so the scientist 
went down and started taking the mud to create the pond. Is that wait, wait, wait. Get your own mud. Because <laughs> this I created. <laughs> bring, bring your own mud. Where did that come from? We say everything of raw material. What raw material, where did it come from? That cause of the cause of the cause of the cause of the cause. Brahma Yoni, ultimately where we reach is that. Anything, any living being or any inanimate object also, we think about what is the cause of this, what is the cause of this. Even a state, for example, sometimes certain states of our mind make us, you know, aware. Okay. Why is my mind so uneasy today? What is happening? Uneasy. Okay. What is the cause of this uneasiness? What is it? Behind that, what is it? Behind this, what is it? But even if it is uneasiness, even if it is anger, even if it is anything undesirable also, we go behind, 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 cause, 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 cause. Finally, we will reach the soul. Because that agitation also can be experienced only in the presence of consciousness. Without that, agitation is also not possible. So, even if it is something undesirable, but when we think of cause, 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 what is the cause of that, cause of that, cause of that, cause, ultimately it will reach consciousness. Brahma So, the one who has reached here, Observing, seeking, searching, one who has seen this. When such a seeker sees or experiences, here the word see is used, but it is not seeing with the eyes. You have to remember that. So, one who is directly experienced, and how can one experience? Here the seeing means what? Means experience as I, I am this. Not there is one Brahman who is very effulgent and the one who is the creator and the cause of the cause. Not that way. It is me. So when such a seeker becomes a seer, then Tada, that time, Vidwan, Vidwan, that person of knowledge, because the one who has recognized this supreme consciousness as oneself, he or she is only called Vidwan. The one who has knowledge, <coughs> that person of knowledge, Punya Pape Vidhuya. Vidhuya, having washed away, having destroyed, having gotten rid of what? Punya Papa. Sins and merits. Punya also, yes. As far as this path of knowledge is concerned, the so called good deeds are also bondage only. How can good deeds be bondage? It's a very beautiful example for that. Which Guruji only told us. There is a temple somewhere in south of India where they have this seva of pounding rice. So, they have this big mortar and a big you know, long pestle and then you know, fairly heavy and there is rice and then you keep pounding rice and then that is taken to prepare offerings for the Lord and then distributed at, as prasad. So, the thing is whoever devotees go there, they when they are going around Pradakshina, on that Pradakshina path only it is kept and continuously this happens and it is there is a rule that uh, in the morning when the temples open, from that time onwards till evening, till night, till the temple is open, it has to constantly, you know that pounding has to happen, you, could not, you cannot put it down. It has to go on continuously. So, keep on doing it, doing it. And then how is this possible? So, that is why you have to hand it over to someone. 
you cannot no sir, I, I am tired now i have to go put it down no you can't put it down no, this man was there very enthusiastic went to the temple first time oh this seva is there okay he went grabbed it so it was enough enough you all now move now i will do it very started to people came asked maybe do for some time no no i am doing everyone was driven away he kept doing after all there is limit to capacity no after some time slowly pain started Mm-hmm. Now, by the time the uh, afternoon, the uh, noon, midday offerings and everything was done, and then for some time they leave Bhagwan alone. That let him also rest and get his own time also. So even the pujari left the temple. Nobody was there, and at that time nobody would come for darshan because the curtain is closed, so nobody can have darshan. So nobody was there, and morning when people were there around. when he could have handed over he refused to hand over now he is looking nobody far off no one started chanting om namo narayanaya om namo naray maybe listening to that somebody will come and then i can hand over he turn After a long time, one devotee came there, and he seemed to be fairly new. And he was looking, and then so there was nobody else. This guy was pounding, so he came and asked, oh, "When is the temple going to open? The temple will open very soon. But let me tell you, darshan you can get any time, anywhere. But this seva you can never get." Oh, but you don't put it down, okay? You hand it over to the next devotee, and there's a lot of demand. So, oh, okay, okay, give me. Hand it over. Ran. Good deed, but can become a bondage. So, anything can become a bondage if I am the doer with that attachment. If we do. it is going to become a doubt that is why it is said punya also in another place shankara acharya ji says when papa is said we should understand punya also why because it is an obstacle it is not letting me free it is not letting me progress on the path tada vidwan punya pape vidhuya he goes beyond good and bad deeds and its results joys and sorrows because all these things will bind he just goes beyond all these things then what does he become niranjanah niranjanah extremely pure paramam samyam upaiti upaiti he reaches he attains paramam samyam ultimate equanimity paramam samyam the supreme state of equipoise paramam samyam now here shankara acharya ji beautifully says what is this supreme state of equipoise he says for such a person who has recognized the self as one's own real nature and this non dual self is recognized realized for that person there is no two and when there is no two then where is the disturbance possible paramam samyam only there means there is complete equality so there is no duality at all and therefore equanimity is there there is nothing else to disturb me paramam samyam pai oh then further 
another beautiful mantra. There are some mantras we can find the similar ideas in uh, other Upanishads also. But there are some mantras which are unique to an Upanishad. One, one of them here so very beautiful words used here. Mantra number four. <coughs> Prano Heshaya Sarva Bhutair Vibhati Prano Heshaya Sarva Bhutair Vibhati Vijanan Vidwan Bhavate Nati Vadi Vijanan Vidwan Bhavate Nati Vadi Atma Krida Atma Rati Kriyavan Atma Krida Atma Rati Kriyavan Esha Brahma Vidam Varishtaha Esha Brahma Vidam hmm. This Vidwan, this the Vidwan which was referred to in the previous verse also, that is the seeker, now he has become the seer, the knower, know, has known, come to know one's own self. What has he come to know himself as? Pranaha. Prana, the word prana means life breath or physiological function. That is what is prana. But here, Gurudev also and uh, Shankaracharya ji also, they explain prana means what? Here, it means not just the life breath or the, the vital uh, activities that are going on physiologically, but Prana means pranasya prana, the one because of whom all these uh, physiological functions are happening. That consciousness, that sentience. Pranaha, yaha sarva bhutaihi vibhati, that consciousness who is manifested as the very life breath in every living being and expresses itself in the form of all these beings and objects. This whole universe is its own expression. Earlier, the words like Mahima, Vibhuti, all this we saw. Here, Sarvabhutaihi Vibhati. It is Manifested shines forth in form of all these things and beings. Having known that consciousness and it can be known. Vijanan. Vijanan means Visheshana Janan. It has to be known as I. I am this self. Only that way it can be known. If, we, if one knows just intellectually, ah, there is one self and this is what happened, no. That is information. Vijanan, Vijnana means experience. I am that. Vijanan, Vidwan, one who knows alone can be called as Vidwan, the knower. What about him? Bhavate na Ativadi. Ativadi na bhavati. He doesn't become or he doesn't remain Ativadi. What is this Ativadi? <laughs> Vadi means the one who talks. Ativadi means talks too much. Or somebody is talking, you cut and then talk in between. Uh, interrupt. Or don't let anybody else talk and just keep talking. Ativadi. So, any of these meanings. So, constantly blabbering, saying something or the other. Yeah, he is saying, the one who has recognized this consciousness doesn't talk too much. Because that is why it is said, the sign of knowledge is silence. 
From now onwards, I will not talk. I will remain silent. And then I will tell people, this is the mark of knowledge. Silence. Therefore, I am not talking. Here it is not said that if you are silent, you will be a person of knowledge. He is saying a person of knowledge will remain silent. So it is not the other way, reverse equation. If I remain silent, then I will realize myself. No. So a person, the knower, bhavate na ativadi. You don't keep on talking. Especially, he will not talk about anything worldly. If at all he has to speak, all speech will be about the self alone. There is no, nothing talking about anything else. So, earlier also, same Upanishad, what has he it has said, the Guru has instructed, said, Anyavacho Vimunchatha, said, give up all other speech, Anyavacho, here also, he doesn't talk, man of knowledge, doesn't talk, unnecessarily, blabbering in vain. One who knows doesn't need to talk, doesn't feel the need. One who does not know, keeps on talking, talking, talking. Quite a lot. Now that does not mean one who keeps talking is not knowledgeable. It is not that kind of relationship is not there. Oh, this person is talking means no knowledge. You are our own Guru Parampara if we see. Taponji Maharaj. Na Ativadi. You would not speak. Thought of demand has to be there. Then he will say, okay, little bit. Then he will teach nicely. Gurudev, even if you don't demand, I will come into your house, into your bedroom and teach. I am not, not going to leave you because if I leave you, you lazy people, you will not learn anything. So that is Gurudev's compassion. No, both, were, both were compassionate, but the expressions are different. But as far as worldly matters are concerned, both will be silent. Because they are not interested. What is the point in talking about something? It is like, you know, we wake up from dream. Okay. One who has woken up, how much will we talk about that dream? You know, I, you know, I had a billion dollars, you know. And all that I was going to give away in charity. Now, what would, then why would how much you had and you were giving away charity. Why? What did you Why did you not give away? But then I woke up. What to do? No. What is the point of talking about all these things? You know, it's dream. Similarly, for a realized person, what world? And to such realized people, we will go and say, No, I am not getting promotion in my office. Please do something. And that person asking, What office? <laughs> what, which world are you talking about? But in their compassion, they say, okay. Right. Na bhavate, bhavate na tivad. Doesn't unnecessarily keep on blabbering and all. A knowledgeable person tends to speak less. So he knows everything, he, he understands everything. So it is not that he doesn't know what's happening. But he is just uh, silent. It's like that bird, second bird. Anashnandanyo Abhichakashi. He is sitting and watching. That's all. Doesn't speak much. So, Vijanan Vidwan Bhavate Na Ativadi. Doesn't. Speak unnecessarily, speak too much. And this type of person, how does he live in this world? 
One thing is yes, he is not unnecessarily, there is no chatter going on. Not only outside, even inside in his mind no chatter is going on. So such a person, how will that person exist in this world? He is not thinking, also. why should he unnecessarily think? Because the thinking also is illusion. I am the one because of which the mind is able to think. And he is abiding in that. So why should he unnecessarily think? Oh, let it be. So such a person, how does he live? Atma Krida. He is playing in the self. Atma Ratihi. He is reveling in the self. Now, playing and reveling are two things. What are these two things? Let's explain here. Playing means whenever he sees something, it immediately, some kind of uh, stimulus he is in touch with, he gets in contact with immediately, that will lead him to the self only. So, when he is seeing everything, he recognizes everything as the self. So, he is playing with the self. And when nobody else is there, nothing else is there, he is alone, he is reveling in his self. So, when such a saint comes in contact with the world, he is playing. But playing with what? Not the world as a real world, but with the self of which this is just an expression. And when such a saint is alone, he is reveling in his own inner self. So, with eyes open, he is meditating. Eyes closed, he is meditating. Nothing else but the self. Atma Kridaha, Atma Ratihi. Oh, so he is just reveling in the self, yes. So he must not be doing anything. This seems to be good state. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't need to do anything. Because he knows everything is religion, he doesn't do anything. There is no. And Gurudev stresses upon this word, the next word, and that is Kriyavan. Kriyavan means he lives a very active life. He is not a lazy person. Because sometimes, whenever we talk of knowledge, one person, I have gained knowledge or I am on the path of knowledge, therefore, I will not do anything. In fact, a person who has gained knowledge has more to do. <laughs> they live much more active life than the ignorant. Kriyavan, constant action. As a seeker also and as a seer also. Both. Kriyavan. Yeah, Kriyavan can mean that the reveling in the self itself is for them, their Kriya. Means that's what they do. What do you do? I revel in the self. That way also we can understand. So, they are interacting, transacting everything. But it's all a sport. Me, I, me, myself. Three of us enjoying life. Kriyavan or Kriyavan can mean all types of sadhana, etc. They sit down, just sitting also is an action. They are doing that. Or they have some wandering monks are there. So they wander, that is their Kriya. But what are they doing? They are actually established in the self only. They are seeing nothing else. Taponji Maharaj went around Himalaya so much. He loved wandering in the Himalayas. And if we read the book Wanderings in the Himalayas, we will understand. He was not looking at, no, he didn't go for typical tourism, go and take pictures and all. No. He, he was in complete communion. Established in the self. He just saw the glory of the self everywhere. That was his experience and that's what he has noted down. It's a beautiful spiritual diary. If you have not read, we must read it. 
तो क्रियावार जस्ट तो एवरीथिंग इज अ साधना फॉर दे डोंट नीड इट एंड इफ इट्स फ्रॉम द सीकर्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दे बिकम वेन Mahatmas are also doing japa. Oh, then I should also do. They may not need it, but they are doing it just to lead by example, so that we also get inspired. Kriyavan. Somewhere it was said, Kriyavan also should mean that you know they do all this yagna and all these rituals and all. So they must be performing all the rituals. So why do they need all these rituals? And for what? What is the ritual? What is the result? Ah, you will go to some swarga lok, and they are much beyond the swarga lok. They don't need anything. Why should they perform all these things? And any such once one person is, you know, going ahead on the inward path, any such external ritualism or anything like that. is unnecessary bird so it is not that ritualistic karma that we are talking about here here kriya var means he is living an active life and our entire guru parampara whether it was ved vyas ji shankara acharya ji tapo ji maharaj shivana ji maharaj puja gurudev all these people kriya var active life means what constantly teaching that is also kriya in their life but as they are teaching it is not that they are teaching somebody else for them it is all their glory of the self only they are reveling in the self so the experience is constantly that of self but they are constantly engaged in kriya in some or the other action very active life आत्मक्रीड़ा आत्मरति क्रियावान रेवलिंग इन द सेल्फ येट वेरी वेरी एक्टिव एष ब्रह्म विदाम वरिष्ठ सच पर्सन अलोन इज वरिष्ठ द बेस्ट अमंग ब्रह्म विदाम अमंग द नोअर्स ऑफ ब्रह्म मीन्स दे ओनली हैव रियलाइज्ड ब्रह्म वन हु हैज नॉट रियलाइज्ड ब्रह्म will look for no I, i will not do anything i am lazy sangha succumbing to laziness and just remain a burden on society this pujo gurudev had objection to such a kind of people where the real knowledge was not there but as soon as he saw swami shivana ji maharaj highest knowledge deepest devotion but sincere service to the community he so such active life these people are living that is why he wanted to join atma krida atmarati kriyavan actively what compassion guru dev more than 40 uh, four decades 40 years 42 years tirelessly work every single day thousands of people inspired transformed forever what active life sometimes every day in a different city sometimes same day two or three places and everywhere talking meeting So this active life. This is the role model that we need to emulate. Engaged in service, but reveling in the self. On a far mission, Swami is only very beautifully put it. That Puja Guru Dev, after reaching, he started teaching. and all of us for reaching we are teaching it's very different but 
రోల్ మోడల్ ఇస్ లైక్ దాట్ ఆత్మ క్రీడ దాట్ ఈస్ వై హీస్ విప్రే సద్గురు బ్రహ్మ విద్వరం ద బెస్ట్ అమంగ్ ద నోవర్స్ ఆఫ్ బ్రహ్మ ఏష బ్రహ్మ విదాం వరిష్ట will sit <clears throat> few minutes sit in a comfortable position the back neck and head in one straight line body is relaxed focus your entire attention on the breathing let the breathing continue naturally but focus your attention on the breathing let the attention be just below the nostrils where we observe the breath the breath going in and that coming out let the breathing be natural normal as it was as we observe the breath try to focus the attention on the cause of the breath what is making this breathing possible that consciousness because of which this breathing is happening
mind may wander here or there. Bring it back to the breathing. And from there, to the consciousness, is making this breathing possible. The mind will try to objectify this consciousness, try to know it as something different from itself. But it is not an object of our thought. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Om Namah Hari Om